Home to some of the world's most venomous snakes, you have to be built different to survive the Australian wilderness. But hiding in the thickets of fallen leaves is a secretive snake, one of the weirdest looking reptiles in Australia. The death adder should not be underestimated. It's one of Australia's deadliest reptiles and can bite you faster than you can blink. All right, have a look at this snake right here. You're probably thinking, Spencer, it's a boring brown viper. Why do I care? You might think that, but you're actually wrong. This is not a viper at all. This is the death adder, a very, very unusual elapid here in Southern Australia. The elapids are a group of highly venomous snakes found throughout the world. Typically, we think of cobras, brown snakes, and taipans, these large, slender, active hunting snakes that subdue their prey with potent neurotoxic bites. But the death adder, looks completely out of place within their ranks. That banding, it does remind me of like the speckled or tiger rattlesnakes that we get back in Arizona. The snake's appearance actually gives us clues about its biology. The death adder looks like a rattlesnake because it actually acts like a rattlesnake. See, rattlesnakes are terrestrial vipers. They have these intricate patterns because they're sitting coiled up in the vegetation waiting for prey to come to them, not actively hunting like many of the elapids do. Vipers have this incredibly stocky, muscular build because they're not built for long, enduring chases. They're built for short bursts of speed, striking out at their prey at the perfect opportune moment when that prey is walking by their ambush position. Generally speaking, vipers tend to be more nocturnal, so they have these slit-shaped pupils. In the daylight, it looks like a vertical line, but it actually expands to let in more light after dark. Turns out the Death Adder has this exact same thing. Like in every facet, the Death Adder looks almost exactly like a viper, which is one of the things that makes it one of the weirdest snakes in all of Australia. They're short, stocky snakes with an intricate pattern to obscure their outline when they're wading in the vegetation and leaf litter, and their vertical pupils allow them to see really well in the daylight and in the dead of night. Like the vipers, these snakes are the epitome of patience, waiting for hours, sometimes even days, on popular game trails for little mammals or lizards to walk by. But if we take a closer look at the snake, you can start to see some subtle differences that show this is something a little bit different. You can see that face there is actually kind of funny looking. Some of the photos I've seen, they almost look sort of like a frog face tacked onto like a water snake body. But even if it's a little funny looking, don't let that appearance deceive you. This is one of the most venomous snakes in all of Australia. And as its name suggests, Death Adder, it can absolutely kill you. Like other elapids, the Death Adder has a potent neurotoxic venom. Like a kill switch, it quickly turns off the nervous system of its prey, absolutely stopping it in its tracks so the snake can claim a meal. This effect comes from how the venom targets nerves. Much like North American coral snakes and the Australian funnelweb spiders, it works as an inhibitor of your nerves' ability to send signals. We know that nerves are cells that send electrical signals through your body, but how does the signal pass from one nerve to another? In between the cells in this biological wiring are tiny gaps called synapses. Nerves release neurotransmitters into these gaps, which helps to trigger signals in the next cell in the chain. Death adder venom blocks this process, basically stopping nerve signaling in its tracks, and it's among the most potent toxins in the reptile world. With an LD50 score of 0.4, the death adder is one of the most venomous snakes not just in Australia, but the entire world. To put it in perspective, this snake might look like a rattlesnake, but it's actually five times as toxic. And this actually might be an underestimate. See, the only LD50 score I was able to find for the death adder was subcutaneous. And there's actually different ways to measure the potency of a snake's venom. We have intravenous and subcutaneous. Intravenous scores are gonna be way more toxic because that's getting the venom right into the veins of the test subjects allowing it to circulate a lot more freely in their body, meaning you need a lot less of it to actually kill something. Subcutaneous, you're simply just injecting it into the skin, which means it's not going to spread quite as far throughout the victim's body. What this means is, under normal lab conditions, the death adder's venom might be even more toxic compared to the rattlesnake, 
but that 0.4 figure is actually pretty realistic to what you'd expect to receive in a snake bite. See, snakes are pretty accurate with their strikes, but they're not surgically accurate. They're not able to aim precisely for your veins. So most snake bites are actually gonna be subcutaneous envenomations and not intravenous. So that 0.4 figure is likely to be a lot more realistic. But the typical range of rattlesnakes that score of around two is intravenous. So if that puts it in perspective, the death adder venom is really a force to be reckoned with. Now, one of the most interesting things about this snake is not its venom and not its appearance. It's actually the way that it moves. And not when it's slithering here. It just moves like a regular fat bodied snake, kind of like a little caterpillar. When it's coiled up is where this snake actually really shines. That tail back there you can see has a little bit of a weird light colored end. And it can use that, whip it back and forth like a little worm or a lizard tail to attract mice or other small mammals to investigate, thinking they might be getting a meal. But what it does then is it lashes out. And this snake is actually the fastest striking snake in the entire world. What makes these ambush hunters so special is the fact that even though they don't move a lot, when they do move, it can be lightning quick. The vipers, which are the typical ambush hunting snakes, are these fat-bodied, muscular reptiles. They don't need these smooth, streamlined bodies built for endurance. Like many of the active hunting elapids, they're sitting there coiled up, charging up their muscles in that sun and holding onto that energy, waiting patiently for the right prey item to walk by. These snakes can explode into action, delivering a painful and lethal bite. But while vipers are quick, the death adder is not only quicker, but it's the quickest. The death adder has the fastest strike in the entire reptile world. It can go from rest, strike at you, and return to rest in 0.15 seconds, almost a tenth of a second. For reference, you blink your eyes in about 0.3 seconds. This snake can fully strike and return twice in the time that it takes you to blink. So if you think there's any hope of you dodging the bite of a death adder, think again. So you better watch for your step when you're in death adder country. One of the reasons I'm keeping myself nice and far back here and using only the hook to manipulate the snake is because they are wicked fast. There is zero chance if this snake wanted to bite me that I'd be able to dodge and it could land me a serious neurotoxic bite and instead of being out here looking for cool wildlife, I'd be on my way to the hospital, which is not at all what we want. The nice thing is the death adder is an elapid, so it has short fixed fangs in the front of its mouth rather than long hinged fangs that can deliver venom deep into tissue. Where a viper could bite through jeans, a death adder is gonna have a hard time getting through your sock. So as long as you're not walking barefoot, the likelihood of a death adder getting your foot is actually unlikely. A more realistic scenario where you're gonna be bitten by a death adder is if you're hiking in the rocky country they call home, climbing up cliff faces without seeing where your hands are going. That death adder might see your fingers encroaching on its face as a threat, potential predation event and it will strike out bite your finger as a means of defending itself where the vipers have a primarily hemotoxic venom a tissue destroying extremely painful venom the death adder is entirely neurotoxic and it's not a highly painful neurotoxin either you might feel a scratch like something just kind of nicked your finger you might not even realize that you've been bitten by a venomous snake and this is why it's so dangerous because when that neurotoxin spreads through your body, it's going to bring paralysis along with it. Much like the coral snakes we have back in the US, the presynaptic neurotoxin of the death adder has a sort of delayed effect. You might not see the maximum symptoms until six to 12 hours after you're bitten. So you might actually think you received a dry bite from the snake, but over time, your limbs will get weaker your breathing will get more labored and you'll lose motor function. This isn't like the Taipan where you're unconscious in minutes. The death adder kills you slowly and not very painfully, but it still kills you. Prior to anti-venom, it's thought that death adder bites had a 50% mortality rate, meaning you had a 50% chance of dying if you were bitten by that snake. And simply it's because the painless bite and the relatively painless symptoms mean you might not seek medical attention until it's too late. But how likely are you to actually be bitten by this snake? The truth lies in its name. Death Adder might sound terrifying, 
but there's actually a bit of a funny story behind it. These snakes rely entirely on their camouflage to ambush their prey, so much so that a death adder might sit in the same spot for days on end waiting for prey to wander by. Their whole deal is as long as they sit still, nothing can see them, and they'll be left alone. When early settlers arrived in Australia from Europe, they noticed that while other snakes disappeared into the brush when they approached on foot, these snakes stayed still, as if they hadn't heard anyone coming. This gave them the name Deaf Adder. And while we don't know for sure how deaf became death, at some point, people realized how deadly their bite was and probably just assumed that their name was being pronounced with a lazy th. The death adder is absolutely one of the most dangerous snake bites you can receive in Australia, but they would rather stay hidden in the leaves than use it on something that isn't food. Even though they're the fastest striking snake, even though they're one of the most venomous snakes in Australia, case in point, none of these creatures really want to attack us. They want to be left alone to do their thing out in the secret world that surrounds us every single day. That is incredible. One of the few snakes that I'm actually somewhat not afraid to work with in Australia because you can see its movement is very much just like any of the vipers we have. It's a terrestrial ambush hunter, so its movement is going to be a lot similar to terrestrial ambush hunters that I've worked with back home. They're not as active, they're not as wily as the Eastern Browns or the Taipans. So we're gonna let him go right back off into the night, keep cruising down this road and see what other crazy secrets nighttime in Australia has in store for us. One of the weirdest venomous snakes in the world, the Death Adder certainly lives up to its name in its capacity to kill, but it's a mild-mannered reptile that keeps to itself. Many of the vipers whose hunting strategy it copied are much more confrontational, and there are harrowing stories about some of the vipers of Central and South America. The Fertile Lance has not only killed more people than the Death Adder, but it has the highest kill count of any snake in the Western Hemisphere. And according to the locals, if you see this snake, you have to kill it before the sun goes down or your life will end. If you want to learn more about the incredible Lancehead Viper, and see if it's really cracked up to these myths, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.